Hi listeners, I am Emily, a student at the University of Illinois, and today Jean Droskal, Brianna Gregg, and I are chatting about interning for credit. If you have any questions after listening to this podcast, please email us at acescareerservices at illinois.edu. Hello, thanks for listening. I'm excited to be here. We hope to fill in some of the gaps that you may have about interning for credit this year. Hi everyone. Before we jump in too deep into this conversation, I just want to bust a myth. Employers cannot give credit for internships. Universities give credit. Employers can work with the university, faculty, and staff to warrant projects that are eligible for credit at a particular institution, but employers cannot give credit for internships. Thank you for clearing that up, Jean. So how exactly would I elect to earn credit for my internship? Well, um, that really depends on your department. So each department operates in differently, but typically you'll want to work with an instructor in your department that will supervise you during the internship. They'll give you an outcome assessment along the way, make sure that you're making adequate, adequate progress to learning outcomes that they would hope for you in an internship. Some majors automatically require an internship as part of the degree plan, uh, but others consider it as an added bonus. So you said that students work with an instructor in their department. Are there certain people who do this internship supervision or how would a student even go about locating the right professor for them? Well, each department, again, is, is different, and that's the beauty of the College of Aces, right? We're all a little different. Uh, but first, I would talk to your academic advisors. They may know some faculty members who are already willing to work with students who want to seek credit for an internship. If you already have a great relationship with one of your professors, approach them about it. It's, it's really about that networking, having that conversation, and, and seeing who's willing to help. Okay, thank you. So now that I know how to find the right supervisor, what steps can students take to approach that faculty member? Well, once you have a list of faculty you identified, then email them about your interests. You most likely will need to have a project in mind, your supervisor's name, and the organization with whom you want to work. And once you've agreed to be once they have agreed to be your faculty advisor for the internship credit, they'll have a CRN code to give you. The faculty member will tell you the requirements, such as a final paper, journal entries, a presentation, etc., to fulfill the credit. What forms do I need to fill out to make this official, and when do I have to submit them by? I feel like I'm a broken record, Emily. Sorry about that. <laughs> But again, each department does this a little differently. Uh, typically, each faculty member will have their own course internship code. So when you go for registration, uh, each class has what's called a course registration number or CRN for short. Uh, when the faculty member agrees to be your internship supervisor, uh, they can give you their course reference number code for that internship class. Many internships put the internship course on the semester immediately following the internship. So, for example, if a student is interning in, during the summer, they would put the internship class or credit on the fall semester, even though a lot of the work is being done over the summer term. This way you're not technically enrolled for the university over the summer months, uh, but you're still earning that credit towards your degree. It is important to understand that it is the student's responsibility to actually register for the internship. So actually going on to Illinois Student Self Service and registering for that internship class. And understand how many credit hours are agreed upon prior to starting that internship class. So internship classes can run from one credit hour to four credit hours, six credit hours. It just really depends on the department and, and what's agreed upon by the student. Uh, we just really want to make sure you have that relationship built uh, with that professor and understand what's expected prior to registering for that class. Okay, so I know you touched on this, but it sounds like I can do an internship over the summer and earn credit for it in the fall as long as I register for the class in the spring, just like I would for any other fall classes. Yes, that's the typical timeline for most students. Absolutely. Okay, and can I still get paid if I am interning for credit? 
Uh, thanks for asking that question, Emily. Absolutely, you can and should be paid for work that is benefiting an employer. Employers need to follow FLSA, like Federal Labor Standards Act guidelines, in paying employees and interns. If the primary beneficiary of the work is the employer, then the intern should be paid. This opportunity sounds exciting for students, but I am worried that COVID-19 might affect my internship. So what should I expect to change about this process if it does? That is a valid concern. Right now, it's hard to say what limitations will be in effect this summer. So this is the time to think creatively. What can you do for an organization that would add value, whether you are in person or working remotely? If you can propose a solution to an employer backed up with solid ideas, you're more likely to secure an internship, whether or not COVID restric restrictions are still in place. Alternatively, look for gigs, meaning short-term temporary project-based work. These gigs can provide the experience employers in the future would still appreciate. Another idea is to consider interning while you're going to school. For example, Research Park at the University of Illinois has internships in Champaign that enable a student to work while attending school. It's just important to make sure that you're communicating your ideas and, and what your plans are for the future with your faculty advisor. You just want to make sure that your faculty advisor is on board with your plans, even when they do change. So communication is key. Well, that's all of the questions that I have today. If anyone else has questions, please reach out to us at acescareerservices.illinois or at illinois.edu. If you have any questions about credit, degree audits, forms, be sure to contact us in academic programs. We're in 128 Mumford Hall, but obviously uh, we're also available online. So you can give us a call at 217-333 3380 or email us at aces-academics at illinois.edu. When in doubt, be sure to ask. Again, communication is key. It is better to find out now the answer as opposed to after the semester is over. Bye, and remember, you're an Illini and you've got skills. <laughs>